Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video we're going to be looking at natural selection and adaptive evolution. We briefly discussed what adaptive evolution was in the previous video. Just as a review, adaptive evolution is evolution which makes an organism better suited for its environment. Okay, so let's get into it. So, in natural selection there's a mix of chance and sorting. So Natural selection can, by chance, create a new genetic variation. That's the chance part, you know, mutation. But then, once after the chance, which is the new genetic variation, natural selection acts and it uh, sorts some alleles over others. So therefore, the outcome of natural selection is not random. Natural selection is focused. And it leads to adaptive evolution, which again is when an organism becomes more suited for its environment. You can learn about that in the previous video. Now, when we talk about evolution and natural selection, sometimes we hear the terms survival of the fittest or the struggle for existence. However, sometimes this can be taken the wrong way. You know, the organisms themselves are not like fighting over each other and not physically trying to kill each other in order to become the one that can reproduce. It's not direct competition between the individuals. Even though the sometimes organisms compete for mating privileges, sometimes you know you see lions fighting for each other to get the right to mate the female lion, reproductive success is determined by more than just like these physical battles. We're going to be talking about these mating privileges later in this video, but that's not really what makes an organism the best in order to reproduce. It's more on the traits that the organism has and how well it matches with its environment. The term relative fitness describes how much an individual contributes to the gene pool of the next generation in comparison to the contributions of other individuals. So some, the organisms which are going to uh, reproduce more and more fitted for their environment have a greater relative fitness than the ones that don't have the traits which are suited for the environment and the ones that can't, won't reproduce as much. The three types of selection. So when you talk about natural selection, natural selection works in about three ways, okay? Disrupt, uh, directional selection, disruptive selection, and stabilizing selection. So directional selection is when a condition favors an extreme phenotypic range. So basically what that's doing is taking what the population, let's say, let's say it's brown, and selecting white. So pushing everything to one side, making, making the phenotype focus way to one side, okay? It's common when there's environmental changes or habitat change. Disruptive selection is when conditions favor both extreme phenotypes over the average phenotype. So let's say this was brown, let's say this was white, and this was black. So disruptive selection would select the very extreme. So that would be black and white over brown. So it pushes them to the two extreme phenotypes. Stabilizing selection is when conditions favor the average but act against the extreme phenotype. So that means shifting it towards the middle. So that means if you have black and white, like in the previous example, everything gets shifted towards brown. And this reduces the amount of variance in an environment because as you can see, we have a wide range of um, alleles here and now we're getting everything pushed to one. So the variance, the variations, uh, sorry, is are being deleted from the population. Now, natural selection increases the frequency of alleles that allow for survival and reproduction. This is adaptive evolution. And natural selection can therefore create an increase in adaptations. But what about genetic drift and gene flow? We talked about this in the previous video. Go check this out. Genetic drift can cause an allele to increase and decrease, and gene flow can introduce both bad and good alleles. But this is an important point to take from the slide. Natural selection is the only mechanism that can consistently lead to adaptive evolution. Genetic drift and gene flow are sometimes good, sometimes bad, but natural selection is the, the one that's always helping the population and leading to adaptive evolution. Let's talk about sexual selection. Darwin was the first scientist to explore the idea of sexual selection. Sexual selection is a type of natural selection, actually, in which individuals with certain inherited traits are more likely to mate than other individuals. That was kind of like what we talked in the beginning of the video with the lions competing for to mate with a female lion. So a sexu sexual selection can cause many sexual dimorphisms, 
and what that is is differences in secondary sexual characteristics between males and females of the same species. So that's basically very wide changes, differences in the uh, male and female. For example, in human beings, if you look, this is just a common trait, like men have short hair, women always have long hair, things like that. So th th that's a sexual dimorphism. Um, these can vary in the organisms b between size, the color, the behavior, and the ornamentation, basically how the uh, organism looks. So there's two types of sexual selection, intrasexual selection and intersexual selection. So let's first talk about intrasexual um, selection. It's a mouthful. <laughs> so intrasexual selection is sexual selection within the same sex. So it occurs when individuals from one sex compete with the same sex for individuals of the opposite women, and it can both occur in the male sex and the female sex. So that would be basically like the example we talked about with the lions, the lions competing with each other, the male lions competing with each other in order to get the right to mate with the female lion. That's intersexual selection. Intersexual selection is when members of gender make mating choices based off specific characteristics of the opposite gender. So that's called mate choice. So females often choose on males behavior or appearance. This happens even in human beings, you know. So like there's that girl that everyone wants in high school. That girl is probably going to go and pick the hot, good-looking, smart guy over the one that doesn't care for his hygiene. And that's an example of intersexual selection. Okay, well, that's it for now. Natural selection, adaptive evolution, and sexual selection are as simple as that.